Hello, my name is Romina Wilmot. Welcome to this special program as part of Brockton Knox Down Diabetes Initiative. As some of you may already know, Brockton will be hosting a, the Brockton Knox Down Diabetes Week starting from June 14th to June 21st. This is a week-long event of free seminars focusing on diabetes management and prevention. We want to thank the lead sponsors of this initiative, such as Harbor One Bank, Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center, as well as New England Sinai Hospital, and the many organizations who have come together to make this possible. Today, we are, have invited a panel of professionals, of healthcare professionals, as well as people who are living with diabetes and are taking care of people with diabetes, and they will be sharing with us tips and advice on diabetes management, as well as letting us know about the different resources available in the community. Welcome all and thank you for being here today. We will start by having them introduce themselves. Go ahead. Hello, um, my name is uh, Jack Cabral. I'm community health worker at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Right now we are working with the patient they have a uh, chronic disease, especially the diabetes, um, hypertension, and other diseases. Hi, my name is Jessica Levine. I'm a registered dietitian at Good Samaritan Medical Center. Hi, uh, my name is Martha Lattimore. I, I was, am a participant of the diabetes programs that I actually sign up, not for myself, but my, uh, because my sister and my mother have diabetes. Hello, my name is Yvonne Weeks, and I'm living with type 2 diabetes. Okay, thank you so much for being here. And uh, today we, are, we also have a live audience of people from the community um, who will be asking questions to the panels that we have here today. And we'll, we'll start with the first question from Julie. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Romina. I have a question for Jack. Jack, why is it important for a person who's living with diabetes or a person living with prediabetes um, to follow a routine of healthy eating and also routine physical activity? This is what I call um, uh, active life or active living uh, because it's very important. All of us, we do need uh, to have some exercise done uh, and it's more important, when, especially when we have diabetes. There's a lot of benefits that we can get from the, first from the uh, physical activity. There's a lot of benefits that we can get, not only for the diabetes, but for other diseases, especially like uh, hypertension. It helps you to decrease or to regulate your uh, blood pressure, to decrease your cholesterol, uh, which when you are active or doing some exercise, uh, you can increase your HDL, cholesterol HDL, which is called a good cholesterol, and decrease uh, LDL cholesterol, which is bad. Other, you can uh, decrease the risk to have a heart disease and uh, other disease that is, is very uh, is very dangerous for yourself, for your life. It helps with a, um, a lot of other things that you can do, maintain your weight. Um, help you to, to sleep well, it helps you to relieve the stress, it helps you to um, manage your activity or to have a better energy during the day. So this is, there's a lot of benefits that we can get from the um, exercise, the physical activity. Talking about um, healthy eating or healthy diet, it is very interesting because sometimes uh, a lot of people, they don't understand about it. But I'm going to share a little story with you just to, to see if I can help you to understand how it's good to um, watch what do you eat. I know the guy, I know the story about the guy who after got married, um, so he noticed for a couple of times the wife was uh, after, uh, fries, uh, after she fries the, the fish. So he noticed that the lady, the wife, was cutting a big eatable piece of the fish with the tail and with the uh, head too. 
So he was very curious about it. So he said, I'm going to ask my wife why. After he asked the wife, why did you cut a, lot, a big piece with a tail and a head in, a, in, this, in this fish that is a eatable part? And the wife said, well, um, I, I'm doing it this way because uh, my mom teached me this way, so I believe it's a good way to do it. Oh yeah, your mom teached you this way. I'm going to ask your mom. So he went to ask the mom. And the mom said, well, I'm doing it this way because uh, my mom teaching me this, that way, so I believe it's a good way to do it. Okay, so he walked down to the uh, wife's grandma. And uh, when he asked the grandma, why do you guys cut a big piece of the fish with a tail and a hat? And uh, grandma said, well, uh, the, t the, the reason we cut a, a big piece is because on that time when I learned it from my mom, the, the skillet pan, you know, the, fr the fry fryer, was very small, so I had to cut the big piece on each side so I can fit on it. <laughs> so this is, is very, it, it seems like a funny, but you know, it's, it's very serious because uh, the way we teach, because a lot of time we hear people saying, oh, diabetes runs in my, in my family. It does, it is truth. But uh, it is serious because it's the way my mom teach me to eat. I will teach my kids, they will teach their kids, so it will be running a family. What we need in this case is like someone to stand in a family with a flag saying, after now I'm going to take action and eat healthy. So it will be changing. He will be changing his lifestyle. He will be changing the, the teaching for the kids. So until we're going to see the diabetes is going to disappear from the family. That's why it's very important the physical activity and on the other side, the healthy eating. Thank you. That, that's wonderful. I think it's, it's actually very important. You really hit on a great point that as long as we're examples to our children, um, we may have a chance to um, knock down diabetes in this city. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for that very uh, illustrative answer and very th thoughtful. So thank you about that. And we'll continue with the live questions from the audience and we'll go to the next one. Hi, this is Mohammed Sheikh. I will ask a question to Jessica. Which foods are good to have on hand to treat <coughs> hypoglycemia and sick days? So, good question. Hypoglycemia is when your blood sugars go low, and it can get really dangerous if they go too low. Um, when you have diabetes, we want to control them and have them be in a optimal range, um, so hypoglycemia is when the blood sugar drops below that optimal range. Um, so when you are hypoglycemic, you want to have some kind of food or drink with you that has sugar in it that is going to spike your blood glucose back up to a decent range. Um, something like 100% whole juice, um, like an apple juice or a fruit punch, something that is 100% because we would prefer you drinking 100% juice. Um, Something like a whole fruit, like raisins, oranges, apples, are always good and easy to have on hand. Um, and then something a little less healthier would be something like a soda, but it has the sugar in it to get your, your blood sugar up. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to the next question from the audience. You can come in. Hello, my name is Celia Kyle. And I have a question for Martha. What advice would you give to someone who has been told they need to start insulin or oral medication but is resisting? Well, um, I would say to them that uh, with diabetes, you gotta, you have to change, you have to change something in your, uh, your, in your life. You have to change a lifestyle of eating and exercise and. So um, I would say that to that person that uh, if they if they can't keep their insulin at the at the rate that it should be, then they are doing themselves a uh, disservice. They need to follow the instructions regarding uh, those things. You know, any instructions that uh, that their doctor gives them, they should take heed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
We'll go to the next question. Hi, uh, I'm Nathan and I have a question for Yvonne. And how do you handle going out to eat? Well, I would plan my meal in advance by calling the restaurant to see what options they have. And this way I can incorporate my chances, choices, sorry, to meet my allowances for my control in diabetes, for my diabetic control, actually. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a really good tip, especially now with nicer weather coming in. Many people are going out to eat, so that's good to keep in mind. And we'll go to the next question. Hi, this question is for Jack. What resources do you use to help support people living with diabetes in the community? Well, as a community health worker at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, we do have a lot of resources. And some of, sometimes we don't even use all of them because, you know, it's a lot of resources and we have to share some information with the, our, our, uh, our co-workers and uh, get some more information because there's a lot of resources. It is very sad when we see a lot of patients walking out after the doctor said, oh, you have to uh, follow the steps. We know uh, it, is very, it, it, it is very sad when a lot of people, they struggle with uh, some situation. After, for example, if that said, oh, you have to eat vegetables. But we know when you go to market, vegetables is very expensive. So it's kind of, there's a lot of other stuff that, uh, or steps that that's my tell patient, oh, you have to follow this one. It's kind of a little t tough and the patient after they left, they're going to be struggling in some difficult and a lot of di different situation. We do, uh, at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, we do have a lot of resources. The only thing maybe patients need to ask for help, so we might see which is a good resource for our patient. We do, like for, for my side, for example, when I'm working with one patient, what I'm trying to do is like a, keep eyes on my patients to make sure patients are keeping their appointment with the primary care, having a follow-up at least every three months, and um, try to work with them um, with a nutritionist. We do have a nutritionist in the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, we do help them like a, personally, I sometimes work with them uh, like a, for the home visit and try to find out if something that I can do to help them. Offer to go with them to grocery store, there's a lot of uh, other resources. We don't provide housing, but we might uh, pro try to provide the safety for our patient, help them to apply for the, to live in a, in a place that is a, a safe p place for them. We might help them get in a transportation, application for the health insurance to get a uh, good health insurance that they might qualify for other benefits outside uh, Brockton neighborhood. Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, help them to get a uh, um, membership for um, some fitness, or like uh, some other places they offer some good membership and a lower price. We do have a lot of resources and I'm trying my best, not only me, I believe uh, the whole, uh, the entire Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, we are doing our best to provide a good and best care for our patient in this neighborhood. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, there are many great resources in the community available, and you will have the opportunity to get to know about all those resources by attending Brockton Nose Down Diabetes Week from June 14th to the 21st. So we hope to see you there, and we'll continue with the next question. Thank you. Uh, the presentation so far has been very, very helpful. Um, this question is another one for Jessica. We hear an awful lot about carbohydrates when you're talking about diabetes. Yes. Are all carbohydrates bad for you? Absolutely not. Um, I think that I hear that a lot as well, that people think that carbs in general are just bad and you have to avoid carbohydrates altogether. But the truth is that we need carbohydrates to function in our daily lives. Um, and whether you think you are following a carb-free diet or not, you're most likely eating carbs in forms of fruits and vegetables, which I think a lot of people don't think that there's carbohydrates in. Um, so there are better carbohydrates than others. 
um, like whole grains have good carbohydrates in them because they're complex. They have fiber, um, which is going to slow down the digestion and decrease the spike of blood sugar so that it doesn't go way up. Um, other foods that are better carbohydrates are going to be whole fruits and vegetables. Instead of drinking a fruit juice, eating an uh, orange instead of drinking the orange juice would be preferable because the orange juice is going to have more sugar in it, whereas the orange is going to have fiber in it. Um, what else? Vegetables. There's the starchy vegetables and non-starchy vegetables that we categorize them as. Um, so a starchy vegetable has more um, carbohydrates and sugars than a non-starchy. And those are foods like corn, peas, potatoes, lima beans. Um, and those are most of the vegetables that people enjoy, I think, because they are sweeter. Um, so foods like broccoli, carrots, green beans, asparagus, cauliflower are all going to be vegetables that are not in starchy. And you can load those up on your plate at any meal um, and not be eating a ton of starches. They have much less carbs in them than corn, potatoes, and all those other starchy vegetables that I mentioned. Thank you very much, yeah. Jessica. Thank you. So now we'll go to the next question. My name is Curly Bollier, and my question is for Martha. What support have you found in the community to help you manage your diabetes? Okay, uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't actually uh, go for myself uh, because I don't have diabetes. I have diabetes uh, in my family. My mother and my sister are both type two diabetic. Um, and I found after signing up for the program that that was a good benefit for myself as well, you know, uh, to help me uh, to get plenty of, you know, information that would give me the understanding of how diabetes can affect anyone's lives, you know, and I didn't want to uh, get diabetes myself, so I, I thought maybe maybe I should try this program and um, so and I got a lot of information from it Miss Louisa uh, Schaefer uh, she was very informative and she really really um, uh, talked on a personal level with her uh, with the classmates and I enjoyed you know I really enjoyed the program because it was you know really beneficial well, thank you. Since I've um, been going to the Brocken Neighborhood Health Center, they have provided me with so many things that I need for every one of my kids, like the foot doctor and for eyes and for everything. They recommend me or they send me somewhere so I could get the care. So it's really been helpful for me with my treatment since I've been going to for a little over a year now. Since Good. I'm, so thank you. Good. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. We'll go to the next question now. Hi, my question is for Yvonne. Um, what does it mean to you to be empowered to take control of your health? Well, having just completed a program, my life, my health, at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, it has given me the opportunity in education and information to live a more healthy or productive lifestyle with diabetes. Great, thank you. Good. Good. Just any additional questions or anything you would like to share with the audience? I just uh, um, increase a little more about um, Yvonne. Eve, she was commenting about um, uh, my life, my health, a Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, for a couple of people that might don't know, what it, what it means this program, what type of program is a I believe it, because it's a program that we provide like a training for six weeks where you can learn how to manage, how to live well even with the ill. So you can feel, feel stronger, you can be able to manage your, your disease and uh, work out and be happy with your family. Good. Good. So, yes, there are many resources uh, and many great programs that we hope all of you who are watching from home can take advantage 
uh, from them. So I actually had a question for, um, for Jessica in regards to what is the difference between a registered dietitian and a, a nutritionist? I was wondering about those two uh, titles and those two responsibilities. Yeah, so I think those two get mixed up quite often. Um, so a nutritionist is anybody who reads a book or takes some kind of online course um, and then they have a background knowledge of nutrition and therefore they can call themselves a nutritionist. A registered dietitian has completed a course at a university or some kind of college. They've done their internship. Um, they have gotten all of the class hours that are required and they have went and taken an exam to pass their licensing boards and taking an exam for the um, for the, to be a registered dietitian. Um, so it's more rigorous and there's more, there's more to becoming a registered dietitian than there is to being a nutritionist, basically. Because anybody can really call themselves a nutritionist as long as you know anything there is to know about nutrition. Good, good. So main uh, takeaways that we got from this great panel today is to get involved, to talk and communicate with your doctors, your physicians, to ask and look for the great programs and, and resources available in the community. So we hope that you found this panel to be beneficial. Any last thoughts, questions, anything that you, any of you would like to share today? Julie, thank you. So I, I think it's important um, that you know, people that are living with um, diabetes, be it type 1 or type 2, we know that it is a, um, a chronic disease, meaning that we don't have a cure. So um, I think all these people that are speaking about all these wonderful resources in the community, and you've mentioned that as well, I think the takeaway message that I am hearing is that, it, you know, the resources are out there. It's really important for um, people to seek them out, and that would probably be starting with their health care provider. Um, and really seeking out the education so that they can live healthy lives with their chronic illness um, and with their diabetes. The resources are out there. A lot of times it's difficult to do on your own, um, but there, there's so much help for us. So it, it was really wonderful to hear. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Uh, and before we leave today, I want to make sure that you grab a copy of this brochure that you will be seeing in many places in the Brockton community. This is the Brockton Notes Down Diabetes Week a list of events and seminars, and they are all free. And we will be having a phone walk, um, a mini fair, in which you will be able to connect personally with healthcare professionals and other people in the community who are, are also dealing with this disease or who want to make sure to remain healthy and to prevent this devastating disease. We hope that you all had a great time with this panel as I did. We thank all the uh, members of the panel today. Thank you so much for your time and insights. We thank the audience today and we want to make sure uh, that you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So Brockton Notes on Diabetes Week, June 14th to the 21st. We hope to see you there. If you have any, uh, just want to say before we leave, if you really want to find out more about the events, please visit our Facebook page, Boston, uh, Brockton Notes on Diabetes on Facebook, and as well as harborone.com slash diabetes, and you'll be able to find out more information about it. Thank you so much, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.